What's up y'all and welcome back to my channel. Salut tous et bienvenue sur ma chaîne. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I started off by taking herbs and through my experience, maybe offer some tips and tricks for you. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I first wanna start off and mention again that I am not a certified herbalist. I have a lot of personal experience with herbs, but I cannot guarantee that my methods are gonna work for you. I would suggest that you guys take it upon yourself to do the research needed so that you can learn more about herbs. I will also link this book down below, which is Alkaline Herbal Medicine to Reverse Disease and Heal the Electric Body. This is a book that really allowed me to immerse myself into the benefits of herbs. A lot of the teachings from this book is how I implement my knowledge for herbal medicine into these videos. So I just want to throw that disclaimer out there. In my opinion, I have a very good diet. I am predominantly plant-based. I know you guys see me post a lot of vegan and alkaline videos. I am not 100% plant-based. I eat plant-based probably 90% of the time and occasionally I might have fish. But being that my diet is predominantly at a supreme plant base, I would say that the effect that these herbs have on me is more beneficial just because my diet is already cleaned up. So now let's go ahead and get into the first duo that I would suggest as a beginner and one of the duos that I had when I first started out, which is sea moss and bladderwort. Now, I feel like I'm constantly repeating this because I've mentioned it in a lot of videos. Maybe this is your first time hearing about this. Maybe this is your first video you're watching, but these two right here are a powerhouse because they both have 102 minerals that the body needs. Sea moss alone has 92 out of the 102 minerals. It's an antibacterial, antiviral, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It's great for your thyroid. It can help um, with anybody who has any type of iron deficiency. It's great for joint pain, for bronchitis, it can help remove mucus from the body, and it also can improve your libido and also raise your energy. Um, I actually have a few family members taking the sea moss powder, and they hate it because, well, at least one out of the four people like hate it. My mom hates it, and she's dramatic when she takes it, but she always says that she has a burst of energy after she takes it. And then as far as the bladder wrap, this also is very high in iron, and it can help treat thyroid. It's great in supporting your weight loss. In my personal experience, I have seen that these two actually suppress my appetite. And I would also say that they help curve any type of craving I have. So after consistent use of this, some of the things that I even craved or wanted, I just felt like I didn't really need them anymore. Even when it's that time of the month and I'm PMSing and I want ice cream or anything like that, and I make my own ice cream, I'll go ahead and link a video where I, I made my ice cream with the RX bar down below. To take this is very simple. You're gonna take 1 4 teaspoon of the sea moss powder and then 1 4 teaspoon of the bladder rack powder. And then I personally love lime and citrus and I feel like it helps with the sea taste. Lime can also help detoxify the body as well. So I use one whole lime and I mix it together. And if it's still too chunky in consistency, then I add a little bit of stream water. This is the spring water that I use and then I just go ahead and mix it all together take a shot first thing in the morning, high energy, 102 minerals, and I'm ready to go. These two I would say are like the basic starter pack of, of, of taking herbs, and depending on your taste buds, this might be something crazy to start off with. You can also do raw sea moss as well. The second thing that I would then start out with, just to get a actual cleanse, is sacred bark or cascara sagarda. This is something that you would take for a week max, and it is a extreme, 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 extreme laxative. I think that this is great to start off with because it would start and catapult you into your detox. By cleaning out your colon, you're cleaning out of a lot of waste that you have. People should be going to the bathroom at least once a day. If you eat three meals, ideally you're supposed to go to the bathroom three times a day, but that's not the case for some people. Some people don't go to the bathroom for like four days. You got a lot backed up there and that can lead to you being tired. It could also lead to you having colon cancer and it could lead to a lot of other harmful things. So I would say that in the beginning of an herbal journey or if you're just trying to detox, if you're trying to increase your health, I would start off with a detox. I would be plant-based for a minimum of one week and then I would definitely take the sacred bark. That's something that I did and I feel like by doing this, I was able to ingest the herbs that I was having and be able to fill them and feel the benefits at a very high level. According to the book, let's read some facts about, it has antiviral, anti-cancer anti properties. 
It is primarily used as a laxative by pushing out waste that develops in the intestinal wall. This helps restore the mucus lining, the health of the intestine. This is also recommended that you take the dose of this because if you do take this longer than it says here, seven days, seven consecutive days, and you try to double up on your doses because you think it's gonna work more, it can potentially harm you. Another question that a lot of you guys have is how do I know the dosages? How do I know what to take? I would first say that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a certified herbalist, and I'm not a naturopath, so you would have to consult your doctor. But this book definitely gives you recommended dosages of all of the herbs that you can take. You can see here the red clover, it says that you can take one 400 uh, milligram capsule, two capsules once daily or one capsule twice daily. The sea moss, it says that you can take one 400 milligram capsule of the powder two times daily. It also says that the commercial dosages are more of a natural nutritional supplement rather than a medicinal herb. So you can use greater quantities. And then you have cases where, let me find a good one. Nettle. So nettle, it says that women who are pregnant should consult with a physician. So I will keep stressing that you guys can buy all of the herbs, but in these videos that I, I make for you, you guys are not gonna have the detailed information on the dosages to the extent that you would if you just invest in this book. I do definitely show you guys pieces of the book in these videos, but if you guys are starting out and you guys need some guidance, I would highly suggest getting this book because it will help you on the dosages and if people have certain health concerns like they do have liver problems or they do have gallbladder problems, these will kind of pinpoint the herbs that you might want to stay away from. But overall, you would want to consult with a holistic doctor first to make sure that you're doing the right things and that you are taking the right herbs and the right dosages at the right frequency. And if you are needing a little bit of help on your plant-based journey and you don't really know where to start and you want to be introduced to new flavors, new recipes that you can mix and match with your own and just get a little bit of inspiration, I always like to try out Green Chef's plant-powered menu. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company with meal plans like paleo, plant-powered, keto, and balanced living to choose from. This mashed potato recipe was so amazing. It kind of had a stroganoff type of flavor Flavoring. So much flavor packed in a 30 minute meal. One of my favorite things about Green Chef is it comes with step by step instructions with pictures to make it really easy to follow along. The ingredients come pre measured and mostly prepared, and you just get new ideas and new flavors and new inspiration to make any future recipes. If you guys are interested in trying out Green Chef for yourself, you guys can get $80 off your first month plus free shipping on your first box by going to www.greenchef.us slash 80 find guru. And there you can go ahead and pick out your week's worth of meals. So the third combination that I started out with are Damiana and Blue Vervain. These two are like a PMS counselor. I'll say that. These herbs are happy herbs. They are energy boosting herbs. They are calming herbs. They are anti-anxiety herbs. I have a wild crafted blue vervain and this is an anti-inflammatory. It helps treat menstrual cramps. It helps increase milk production. So if there are women who are nursing and can't produce enough milk, this would be a good herb to take if you consult your doctor first. So improve mood, stress, anxiety, and help with restlessness and boost the immune system. And then we have here the Damiana. This can help boost your sex drive, help with cancer and fibroids, menopause, balance hormones, increase libido, relieve anxiety, constipation, depression, sexual dysfunction, and it's also smoked for meditation. Now, I will go ahead and say in my experience and based on my belief system and my spirituality, a lot of the libido boosting herbs help increase your energy and help increase my personal pro productivity. Um, so I don't want you guys to think that you guys are gonna just be super like aroused when you take these herbs Some people might be triggered in that way. I personally just feel more Energized and more motivated when I take these herbs in my experience with these two um, I would definitely mix them with others, but this is a beginner friendly So I'm not gonna try to throw my whole herb collection on y'all, but 
These two as teas are amazing. So how I would make this is I have a full video on how to make infusion herbs and both of these are infusion herbs, but I would take my teapot here. I would fill it up with some spring water and then after it's filled up with spring water, I would go ahead and boil the water. After the water has boiled and I see bubbles in the water, I would then add half a tablespoon of blue vervain and half a tablespoon of Damiana. And then I would let it steep for about 30 to 45 minutes. In some cases, I even let it steep for like an hour. And once my teapot cools down completely, I kind of put it on a very, 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 very low simmer so that it can basically just stay warm. This was kind of like a night routine where I would do that at night, let it steep or simmer on very, 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 very low for a minimum of an hour. I would turn it off, I would go to bed, and in the morning I would wake up, I would go outside, I'd meditate, I'd write in my journal, and I'd heat up my, um, I'd heat up my tea and have it straight in the morning. And I would just feel superhuman. Like these helped me think so clearly. And when I first started out and I did my detox for seven days, for 10 days of just eating plant-based and detoxing my body and trying to receive the most out of the herbs, I just felt like I had to keep checking and asking um, like people who do take herbs, like, is this normal? Like, are you supposed to feel this clear headed? Are you supposed to feel this like awake? Um, yeah, so that was my experience with taking these two alongside my iris sea moss and my bladder rack. Then I will go ahead and start off with some of my cleansing herbs. So here is yellow dock, burdock root. This is the one that I originally started off with, which is burdock root, and Dr. Sabi always mentions this. This is an antiviral, antifungus, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial. It cleanses the blood. It really, when I'm telling y'all, my skin was glowing and I, obviously I can't pinpoint what it is because I was plant-based and I was taking herbs, so I don't know what it was, but I honestly feel like this right here helped clear my skin and just gave me a glow. From my experience and from what I've learned, cleaning the blood directly helps with clearing your skin and gives you a nice glow. So this is what I originally started off with. So I would recommend this, but now that I have been involved with herbs more, I would suggest and or one of these, which is yellow dock root. Yellow dock root is also a blood purifier. It helps clean, cleanse the lymph system. It helps with digesting fat, bowel movement, liver cleanser, gallbladder cleanser. It helps with sexually transmitted diseases, acne and eczema. So out of the two, um, I personally couldn't really choose, but if you want a good blood cleansing herb, I would definitely start off with something like this. Another one is the sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla or sarsaparilla? I would also say another beginner herb is sarsaparilla root. This is an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-cancer. This binds with toxins to remove them from the blood or the body. This is also great for acne, joint pain, headache, sexual impotence, and colds. This is something, when I first started out, my tea infusion that I would make is I would do I will use burdock root, sarsaparilla, blue vervain, and damiana. So I would do these four. I tried to separate them into like these two being moods and these two being cleansers. But this is my morning um, tea routine for like a week and a half. In the video that I told you guys is these are blends. So I'm using two roots and two infusions. So because these are roots, these have to cook longer at a higher temperature. If you guys want a full detailed video on that, I will go ahead and link it down below. But you need to cook your roots first. So I would let these boil for about 15 minutes. So after boiling these for about 15 minutes, I would turn the heat completely off. And then because the water is extremely hot, I would then add my blue vervain and my Damiana. And then after about 30 to 45 minutes and the water was cool, I would leave it all night so that it's concentrated for an eight to 10 hour period. And then in the morning I would wake up, I would reheat it a little bit and then I would pour it in a glass, have it for my tea. So these two mood boosters, PMS, anti-anxiety, don't be crazy herbs right here in my experience. And then these two were more like cleansers. I'm gonna include some because I think everyone has their own needs and this is why it's kind of hard to do a video on 
what you would suggest for beginners. There are people who suffer from different things. Um, so I will say that if anybody is um, struggling with any type of um, hormonal imbalance or fertility issues or stress levels, two herbs I would definitely include in my beginner collection, maca powder and ashwagandha. So maca powder is an antiviral, anti-inflammatory. It helps boost the immune system. It's high in iron, copper, potassium, manganese, and amino acids. It's, it's also, both of these are adaptogens, but the maca powder helps enhance um, the ability to be more fertile. It helps fight fatigue, boost uh, mental function, mental issues, libido booster, hormonal imbalance, menstrual cycle, menopause, weight gain, and vaginal dryness. And then you have the ashwagandha, which is more known as like a testosterone boosting herb. And it also helps with your cortisol levels and your cortisol levels is your stress hormone. So the ashwagandha is an antiviral, anti-inflammatory, antidepressant. It helps reduce the cortisol levels. It's also an adaptogen because both of these are adaptogens. It helps with anxiety, cancer cells, thyroid, stress, and an energizer. I feel like these two for sure are libido boosters and they're also energy boosters. Maca powder is something that you can often find at like a gym. I don't know about y'all, but like I have like a little juice bar in my gym and there's one uh, post-workout smoothie that has maca powder in it because some people say that this helps you gain weight or gain muscle because it makes you hungry. In my experience, I didn't have a super big effect on gaining weight as well as um, increasing my appetite. But I will also say I was also taking CMOS and CMOS for me suppressed my appetite. The maca powder, um, I say how I would have this is I would do like a maca powder smoothie or I've also put it into my breakfast bowls which I will go ahead and link down below. But maca powder is good with like banana, cacao powder, or you can do like a banana maca berry smoothie after a workout and you can add some ashwagandha. Ashwagandha doesn't really have a strong taste in my opinion. It doesn't really have like a strong, it kind of smells like flour, like baking flour. But maca, in my opinion, I don't like the taste of it. Some people say it has like a nutty, earthy taste, but I don't really like it. Um, when you put it in the smoothie with a banana, I feel like the ba banana helps balance it out as the lime helps balance out the sea taste of the sea moss. But these two, depending on what you're looking for in your beginner collection, if you want to balance your hormones or you're having infertility issues, if you have testosterone issues or estrogen issues, the maca powder would be great for that, testosterone, ashwagandha. My experience. Just for a little immune boosting, I would say elderberries. Elderberries, I have a full video on how I made my elderberry syrup. This is a good beginner herb to have. Once again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but the elderberry combined with the H1N1 flu virus, it helps increase your immune system. It's high in vitamin C. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory, antiviral, anti-influenza, anti-influenza and anti-cancer. It's great to remove mucus from the respiratory system. It helps with colds, flus, and allergies. So just for general day-to-day -day health, this is something that's good to have in your beginner herb collection. I think that's it for what I would start out with, with my herbs. I hope that was well-rounded. The sea moss and bladder rack are to get your 102 minerals. The burdock root and the yellow dock root are to cleanse the blood. The sarsaparilla helps with binding with toxins in your body. And then for all my ladies out there, or even my fellas, ladies as far as the PMS, cause sis, this PMS after this birth control was removed was crazy. So these two, make the mood swings calm down say that so these for me personally have helped with my mood these can also can help with sexual impotence libido boosting um, these are also great for the fellas if you guys have anxiety or depression or anything like this this will boost your mood i don't want to make it seem like these two are strictly for women but as a woman they have benefited me in many ways the cascara i would say this is definitely great to kickstart your detox seven days max i made a mistake with this herb and i will never make that mistake again take the recommended dosage and then like i started like, like i ended with the, uh, these are more hormonal balance balancing herbs yeah so that concludes my videos on my beginner friendly herb collection i hope i didn't throw too much on you but i will go ahead and say over and over and over and over and over again 
that this alkaline herbal medicine book is something that you need. A lot of people have questions as far as the dosages. And in this book, he really breaks down what you can take, how much you can take, and if you're pregnant or if you have any health concerns, what you shouldn't take. I am going to take a tiny little break in showing you guys herbs and show you guys this book because as a beginner, I wouldn't have had the confidence or the information that I needed to start my journey. This book is so essential and I know I mention it all the time, but I see y'all's messages, y'all's DMs, you guys' comments, but I can't answer those questions confidently as somebody who's not a professional and legally I can't give you guys any advice, but all, or I would say about 70% of my information of my dosages and how I mix my herbs, how much I should take come in this book. Here it says indigenous people all around the world were more in tune with the environment and understood which plant to consume to reverse disease. Right here, he does a breakdown of pH balances in the body. So the stomach has a pH of 1.35 to 3.5. The skin's outer layer has a pH of 4.0. The yoni has a pH of 4.5 to protect against overgrowth. You're gonna learn a lot of information about the body first and why certain things need to be a certain way based off his teachings. And then he's gonna break down water he says here that spring water is a safer water to drink. Tap water contains chemicals like chlorine to kill bacteria and fluoride to protect teeth, but these chemicals are toxic to the body and undermine homeostasis. He breaks down his food and energy and cleansing. So the energy foods are gonna be your fruits, which are gonna be high in sugars that are gonna give you natural energy. Your cleansing fruit, uh, food is gonna be vegetables because they're high in nutrients and vitamins and minerals. He breaks down oils, he breaks down seasonings, he breaks down herbal teas, and he also breaks down sugar. And in these pages, he breaks down what the plant is, what its purpose or benefits can be, and then he does the origin of the plant, and then the general commercial dosage. It's hard to read upside down. And then if there are any concerns, he lists the concerns down below in fine print. As a beginner, I would not be where I am right now without this book. And then in the back of the book, he breaks down some of the combinations. So some people ask me questions like, how do you know what to mix? How do you know what to combine? I personally have read this book and have read up on herbs obsessively. So I kind of like to combine it based off of what I feel is best. Um, if I'm feeling like I'm cleansing, then I use different roots and I pair them with complementary herbs so that I get like a well-rounded cleanse rather than just a liver cleanse or whatever. But another hard question that you guys ask me is which one works for this or which one works for that? Herbs, it's not like a one thing type of benefit. So because these are well-rounded, you might do this because you want to bind with the toxins in your body, but you're also gonna see benefits of your joints, of your skin, of acne or eczema that you might have or sexual impotence, cold, headaches, and things like that. So in the back of the book, he has some of the combinations that Dr. Sebi had or some of the combinations that he had. Um, he kind of breaks down what Dr. Sebi used and, and puts his own little twist on it. Getting this book is a big Kickstarter and it's something that I would get as a beginner. All right, y'all, so that concludes my video on the herbs that I first started out with. I definitely added a little bit more than the starter pack because I know that everyone has different concerns. So I added a few different variations of what you might want as a beginner. Definitely start off with sea moss and bladder rack. And yeah, that's it. Cause I feel like I'm gonna start ranting again, but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload. Bisous.